Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Yellow. Last time, we conquered the Cerulean City Gym Leader Misty, and we obtained the Cascade Badge, which is super duper awesome. And we also obtained a new team member in the form of Bulbasaur, who I have switched into the front of the party in the hope that it can get some experience in the upcoming battles. I also have a slot free, because we are going to be obtaining another new member of the team, possibly in this episode. Not positive about that, but there's a decent chance we'll be getting a new party member this episode. Veterans of this game probably know exactly what I am referring to. Anyway, I always thought this was funny. There's a cave entrance right there, and this guy's blocking the way, but because of sprite limitations in the original Pokemon games, it looks like he just has a very full head of hair, we'll just say that. Anyway, we want to head over here, and I don't know if I'm prepared for this, but I think we'll just give it a whirl. All right. Here we have... Blue. Yo, David. You're still struggling along back here? I'm doing great. I caught a bunch of strong and smart Pokemon. Here, let me see what you caught, David. All righty. Now, hopefully my choice to have Bulbasaur in the front is not going to screw me in the end. He's opening with Spearow, so I don't have confidence that I'm not screwed right here. Alright, um, I think this Spearow is going to be very, very, very dangerous, so I'm going to switch over to Pikachu immediately. I just want to get Bulbasaur a little bit of experience, because as you can tell, it's pretty behind in the levels. Luckily, it looks like Spearow can't really do too terribly much to me, and we're very, very close to actually one-shotting Pokemon of this level, which is really, really nice. Alright, so let's just Thundershock again. And down it goes. Might Pikachu level up? Might Bulbasaur level up? Not quite. About to use Sand Shrew. Will David change Pokemon? I think I will. I don't believe we've encountered Sand Shrew yet, but you can actually capture Sand Shrew in the patch of grass to the west of Cerulean City, which I might do off screen at some point just because I need some Pokedex data for the future. Anyway, I'm going to catch, cast Leech Seed right there because when a Pokemon is seeded, it will actually have its HP drained, which is awesome. I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to switch out after casting Leech Seed, and if not, then... Oh well, I'm not a very experienced user of Leech Seed. It's not a move that I usually use beyond late game. Beyond early game, rather. But yes, it does seem to be working, which is very nice. So let Nidorino use Horn Attack right here which does a little less than half, which is unfortunate, but luckily we have Leech Seed by our side, so it's possible we will actually bring it down this turn, which is very, very nice. And wow, we got a critical hit, which I was not counting on, but I very much appreciate. And Bulbasaur grows to level 11. Very nice. All right, up next is Rattata. I'm going to keep Nidorino in for this one because Rattata is very, very weak to double kick. And I feel like Nidorino could do for having a couple more levels under its belt, because Pikachu is already a couple levels above Nidorino. Alright, down it goes, and Nidorino gets level 20, which is very nice. Alright, Eevee is coming out next. I'm going to switch into Bulbasaur, because I'm very confident that Nidorino can, get, can uh, switch in on Eevee without getting one shot, because if this Eevee manages to one shot my Nidorino, I will be very very surprised, although I don't want to make any absurd promises, like I'll eat, I don't know, this Lego piece on my desk, because on the off chance that it actually happens, I don't want to be bound to something that's not safe. Alright, and unfortunately we miss, and we miss again, because Sand Attack is a jerk. I gotta say, I understand completely why Smogon has banned accuracy affecting moves, because they are so frustrating, and they pretty much throw the game to the gods of luck. And there's a word that rhymes with luck that I people I feel like people use to describe um, double team and sand attack and stuff like that on many a forum around the world. And Bulbasaur gets level 12. All right, and Nidorino does not get a level, but we defeated Blue. Hey, take it easy. You won already. You bet I did, and wow, he's cheap. Misty gave me a lot more money than that. Hey, guess what? I went to Bill's and got him to show me his rare Pokemon. That added a lot of pages to my Pokedex. After all, Bill's world-famous as a Pokemaniac. He invented the Pokemon storage system on PC. 
Since you're using his system, go thank him. Well, I better get rolling. Smell you later. And off he goes, but what he says is actually true. We do want to go see Bill because, among other things, he does have some data to put into your Pokedex. But first things first, I'm going to heal. Alrighty, now that we are done healing, I think we are ready to move onwards. Now, there are a lot of fights up on this upcoming route, so hopefully we can clear them through in short order. I still have Bulbasaur in the front. This is Nugget Bridge. Beat us five trainers and win a fabulous prize. Think you got what it takes? Yes, I still have Bulbasaur in the front to take out these guys, and hopefully it'll work out in my favor. Complete with amazing voice crack. Now, it's really funny. These trainers are replicated verbatim in the Malie City Garden in Pokemon Sun and Moon, which I think is really, really funny because I don't think Pidgey is even in the Alola Pokedex, and yet those trainers will use Pidgey just like they do here, which I think is really, really funny. Really amusing Easter egg. Alright, anyway, we have Leech Seed in place. Now let's see how much Tackle actually does to this Caterpie. Not a whole lot, but I'm getting the impression that this Caterpie can't do much to us either, which is really, really nice. Alrighty, and wow, that Leech Seed actually doesn't go off at the end of the turn. It looks like it goes off once Caterpie has taken an action, which is definitely different from how it works in future games. A lot of really, really crazy stuff. Like, a lot of this stuff that has changed, I never really paid much mind to, but now that I've played a lot of the more modern Pokemon games relative to this one, it's really interesting to see how much has actually changed, because I haven't played this one in quite a bit. Alright, anyway, now let's see. It's going to have Leech Seed go off right there, so is the opponent going to send in another Pokemon that my tackle's going to hit? I believe that is how it's going to work. So if I say no right here... No, my tackle just doesn't go off at all, which is... odd. I think I also need to reset the Leech Seed, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, now luckily, Bulbasaur is actually part poison type. I believe prior to Sun and Moon, Bulbasaur was the only starter that started out with its secondary type. Rowlet is part flying and Bulbasaur is part poison. Every other starter in the entire series starts out as purely typed, which I think is really fascinating. Alright, now I know these battles are going to take a little while with Bulbasaur at the head, which is unfortunate, but I think it's really important that we get Bulbasaur nice and caught up to where everyone else is, because in older Pokemon games, when a Pokemon falls behind, it's not quite as easy to get them up to speed. It can take quite a while, and I'm not, incli not inclined to put in that kind of time commitment off-screen when I could just take Bulbasaur on the journey with us and get it leveled up in the battles that we're going to be doing anyway. Alright, anyway, with that, that Leech Seed brings down Weedle, and does Bulbasaur level up? Yes, he does, or she does, because as you can tell, there's no gender in the original Pokemon games. And it learned Vine Whip, which is really, really nice. Vine Whip is a Grass-type move, which means Bulbasaur, who is a Grass-type, can get some good mileage out of it. Woo, good stuff. Indeed, good stuff. I actually didn't lose a lot of health in that fight, which I really appreciate. I'm second. Now it's serious. Oh, it wasn't serious before, okay. Just so everyone knows, now it's serious. Anytime before that, you know, whatever. Alright, unfortunately now she decides to send out a Pidgey, which is not a good matchup for our Bulbasaur, so I think we're going to be switching over to Pikachu. Bulbasaur will still get some experience from it, but yeah, we do not want Gust to be hitting Bulbasaur, although I feel like Gust might have actually been changed in later games to be flying type, and I think in this game it's actually normal? I might be crazy, but I feel like Gust was normal. Yeah, it was a normal type move in the old games, which is definitely really interesting. Alright, now we have Nidoran female coming out. I think Bulbasaur is good to take on this one because Nidoran female is a poison type, so it's going to be doing a lot of poison attacks on us. And since Bulbasaur is actually, as far as I know, immune to being poisoned, we should be okay in that regard. Now, some people might notice, yo, what's up with this? 
you have two poison type Pokemon on your team. Well, I do have to admit, prior to settling on just using the three starters and Pikachu, I did try and craft a team of available Pokemon in yellow that had no type combination overlaps. I legitimately could not figure it out. Like, there are so few Pokemon in these early games that you're practically guaranteed to have overlap unless you go really, really, really out of your way to avoid it. So I figured I wouldn't stress out about it too terribly much. I just figure it's an interesting little bit of trivia. It's very, very difficult to create a team with no typing overlaps, especially when it comes to yellow version having some Pokemon with unique combinations that I would have loved to use just not be available. For example, I really wanted to use a Jinx on my team because it was Ice and Psychic, and that would have made a really good sixth party member that wouldn't have overlapped anything. Jinx is not available in Pokemon Yellow at all, which is unfortunate, but I also think it's really interesting because Jinx just seems like such a random Pokemon to not include. Like, I can't, I can't just be the first person to think about that, right? Alright, anyway... Almost got this thing down. Let's see, is this gonna bring it out? No, it is not. Unfortunately, Bulbasaur doesn't have too terribly much power behind it. Ooh, a critical. That's not good. Alright, come on. Go down. I'd really, really appreciate it if you were to go down. Alright, how much is that gonna do? Not a lot. Which I definitely appreciate. Alright, this should bring down Nidoran, and that should give us a lot of experience considering we're actually under-leveled compared to it. 177. Very nice. How could I lose? Well, I mean, it's super simple, really. Anyway, I think I should go back and heal, because Bulbasaur's taken a little bit of a beating, so I'll be right back. Alrighty, now we are back, and we are heading out to battle number three, which may very well be the last battle we do in this video. The rival battle took a little bit longer than I was expecting, so while I would have liked to complete the Nugget Bridge in this episode, it's probably not happening. Especially given the fact that this guy has three Pokemon, which is quite a bit. Anyway, we're going to be using Leech Seed on this Rattata right here, just so we can get a little bit of... Wow, that did a lot. Just so we can get a little bit of HP out of it. And I think we're also going to try using Vine Whip. And man, this thing's doing a lot more damage than I was expecting it to which is not the greatest, but luckily Vine Whip seems to be doing quite a bit, which I appreciate, and wow, we're already back down to 13 health. I think 13 health was what we were at before I went to go heal, which is annoying. Anyway, I'm pretty sure we can- oh, it knows Hyper Fang. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, that's a thing that happened. I, 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 Man, this game sometimes. Uh, Pokemon always knows how to throw those little curveballs at you. Alright, anyway, here we have Ekans, or Ekans, which I'm pretty sure we've seen before in the hands of Team Rocket, so I feel like it's old hat at this point. Let's just Thundershock it and bring it down, because oh no. Okay, this. This is one of the stupidest things in Generation 1. If you are hit with a binding move, like wrap, you cannot move until the attack wears off. So you could possibly go up to five turns without being able to attack at all. It's really, really stupid. I feel like everyone who's played this game thinks it's really, really stupid. I don't like it. I do not like it at all, and I am so... So, 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 so glad that they actually went and fixed it in Gold and Silver, because it was the dumbest thing. Anyway, with that, I think I should heal again. Alright, now that Bulbasaur is healed up again... Aye, 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 this is gonna be a little tougher than I thought. I think we're probably going to end things off here, because I think this episode's right around, like, the 16-ish minute mark, if my mental math on all of the cuts I've done is correct. So yeah, I think we're gonna end things off here. So, this past episode of Pokémon Yellow, we went up against our rival, Blue, and we were able to defeat him, and he told us that we should keep on going this way to meet Bill. 
we also did some training on our Bulbasaur, which has gone not as well as I would have liked, but I mean, it could have been a lot worse. And next time on Pokemon Yellow, we are indeed going to be continuing along this route, continuing to train our Bulbasaur, and hopefully getting a hold of that new team member I mentioned, because we didn't get a hold of it this episode, unfortunately. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. ポケモン高さ 0.3 メートル重さ 2.0 キログラム忙しくあちこちを飛び回る体力は少ないが大無害士を使うと手強い